The story starts as a single woman named Anna is having a glass of wine before going to bed. However, when she raises her head, she witnesses someone strangling her neighbor to death. She initially thinks she is hallucinating, but upon having a closer look, it is confirmed that the neighbor is actually being killed. Springing into action, Anna grabs her phone and informs the police. Then she decides to rush outside. Unfortunately, it is raining, and as she makes her way, her legs become weaker and weaker, and Anna strangely collapses on the ground. As she closes her eyes, the scene flashes back to the past where Anna once had a happy family. She had a good husband and a loving daughter. One day, the school gives them a task that requires parents to take children to their workplace to experience the work environments. So, her husband Douglas takes their daughter Elizabeth with him to work. Before they leave, the rain pours, so Anna gets an umbrella for Elizabeth. But little did she know that it would be their last meeting. Douglas is a forensic psychiatrist specializing in serial killers for the FBI. He takes Elizabeth with him to prison, into a room where he needs to assess a serial killer who has murdered and eaten 30 people. Maybe Elizabeth should have gone to work with her mom, Dougie boy. Just before the assessment begins, the warden asks Douglas to step out of the room for an urgent matter. The warden then shuts the door and accidentally locks the room. But what Douglas forgot is that in the same room as his daughter is a serial killer named Massacre Mike. Unfortunately, Mike uses the opportunity to the fullest and makes little Elizabeth his 31st victim. The murder of their daughter ruined Anna's relationship with her husband, and as a result, they got divorced. Several years pass by, but Anna is still shaken by the incident, and to make matters worse, she has developed a fear of rain as it was raining on that fateful day. To cope with the loss of her daughter and the breakdown of her marriage, Anna has reverted to drinking wine regularly. The grief has taken a toll on Anna's sanity, and sometimes, she claims to hear noises around the house and to see her deceased daughter, Elizabeth. This has further turned her into an outcast in the neighborhood. The only guy who trusts her is Buell, the community's handyman who specializes in fixing broken mailboxes. There's no way that's a real job. Anna has not dated in a while, but one day, when a good-looking man named Neil Coleman moves into the house across the street, she instantly develops a crush on him. Neil is a widower, and he has a nine-year-old daughter called Emma. This is music to Anna's ears, and in order to get closer to Neil, she befriends his little daughter. But to her dismay, she soon learns that Neil has a beautiful flight attendant girlfriend named Lisa. Anna feels embarrassed after having flirted with Neil and decides to keep her distance for the time being. However, she continues to spy on Neil and his family. One night, while she is drinking wine, she witnesses Lisa being murdered. Anna cannot save Lisa because she collapses on the road due to her fear of rain. Surprisingly, a mysterious person watches it unfold and picks her up. Later, Anna wakes up on her couch, soaking wet. The police, who were previously called by Anna, also arrive and investigate Neil's house. However, they don't find any dead bodies, and Neil reveals that Lisa is a flight attendant and is now at work on a plane to Seattle. The police then question Anna, and when they notice a bottle of wine and some medicine on her table, they suspect she was simply hallucinating and leave. However, Anna is sure that she wasn't imagining things, so the next morning she talks to Neil. But just like the others, Neil claims that Lisa is still alive. He even shows some text messages that he exchanged with Lisa earlier this morning. Despite the evidence, Anna is still far from convinced. After Neil and his daughter Emma leave for the supermarket, she breaks into their home to look for more evidence. Near the window, she finds Lisa's earrings, which she keeps with herself. But before she can find something more concrete, Neil and Emma return home and catch her red-handed. She is then berated by the father-daughter duo for crossing their boundaries before being kicked out of the house. Distraught and embarrassed, Anna heads to her friend Sloane and explains the entire ordeal to her. She tries asking for help to investigate the crime scene, but to her dismay, Sloane also believes that she was hallucinating. Now, because of all the people giving her the same reason, coupled with the fact that she usually sees her dead daughter, Anna becomes convinced that maybe she actually was hallucinating. Hence, she decides to stop her investigation and visit the support group she signed up for after her daughter's death. After the meeting, Anna makes a plan to go out of town to clear her mind. But at the airport, as she waits to buy a ticket, she learns that there haven't been any flights to Seattle during this week. This rings a bell in Anna. As Neil had claimed that Lisa left for Seattle the day before, she also learns that Lisa is currently on long leave. With this information, Anna starts suspecting that Neil has murdered his girlfriend. Hence, she visits the local police station and talks to a detective named Lane. She brings out Lisa's earrings and asks the cop to investigate the case. But Lane mentions that it's not enough evidence. In fact, the only thing it's evidence of is a B&E. Anna leaves the police station dejected, and when she gets to her car, she finds a warning. Stop, or you are next. Despite this, she continues her investigation. When Neil's daughter Elizabeth comes over to sell some cookies, she wins her trust by giving her a large amount of money. Then, Anna 
Anna inquires with the little girl if she heard anything the previous night, right before the police arrived. Elizabeth doesn't say much, but reveals that her dad and Lisa were constantly fighting, and that is why Neil had sent her to watch television. This makes Anna even more suspicious about Neil. The next morning, she looks up Neil on the internet. To her shock, she finds out that Neil was the prime suspect in his late wife's death. However, due to the lack of evidence, he was released. Some claim that he tossed his wife into the water and watched her drown. Anna, who has a habit of overthinking, starts imagining the entire incident. Neil took his wife near the docks and started behaving rudely with her for no reason. Then, as their daughter looked on, he chucked her into the water and enjoyed it as she breathed her last. Though it's all in her imagination, Anna feels her intuition won't be wrong. Anna also learns that a few days after Neil's wife's murder, Emma's teacher died an unnatural death. It turns out Emma and her classmates were out on a school trip when the teacher mysteriously fell off of a lighthouse. Strangely, in the group picture, Neil is the only parent present. Anna again imagines what might have happened back then. She assumes that Neil had a relationship with the teacher. In the lighthouse, he made several advances for coitus, but the teacher rejected all of them. So, in a fit of rage, he pushed her down to her death. Anna becomes more confident that Neil is behind all of these deaths. Hence, she intensifies her investigation. That night, she spots Neil dragging a large duffel bag to his car and becomes sure that he is disposing of Lisa's body. Hence, she quickly hops in her car and starts following him covertly. Soon, they arrive at a shady looking alley where Neil stops his car, takes out the duffel bag, and puts it near a dumpster. However, before Anna can do anything, Neil spots her and the two get into an argument. Anna accuses him of being a murderer, while Neil is upset that he is constantly being spied on. Despite this, Anna is adamant on learning the truth, so she opens the duffel bag. She does find a human, but not a real one, just a puppet. It's then revealed that to cope with his wife's death, Neil picked up a hobby and became a ventriloquist. Oh yeah, serial killer for sure. Every weekend, he visits local bars to perform and make others happy, just like today. Hearing all of this, Anna is once again embarrassed, and she profusely apologizes before leaving. Seeing how obsessed she has been lately, Anna realizes these hallucinations must stop. So, she pours away her entire collection of alcohol. She realizes how Neil has dealt with his losses by making ventriloquism his hobby. So, she too must find a hobby. She starts painting to take her mind away from her daughter's nostalgia. As days pass by, she starts a new life. Until one night, somewhere in the distance, a wild dog finds Lisa's dead body in the woods. This finally confirms that Anna wasn't hallucinating after all. That same night, the police discover the corpse and arrest Anna, as the murder weapon was discovered to be her painting brush. The police suspect that Anna had killed Neil's girlfriend due to jealousy, which seems to make sense. Anna is taken aback by this, but she has no way to back up that she is innocent. Fortunately, the very next day, her best friend Sloan comes to the rescue and releases her on bail. Anna returns home, and later that night, she again starts to have hallucinations. She sees blood dripping down from her attic and immediately suspects that it belongs to Lisa. She panics and calls her psychiatrist ex-husband, Douglas. Anna tells him about the blood and the fact that she might have actually been responsible for killing Lisa. Despite being divorced for years, Douglas calms his ex-wife down and encourages her to go up to the attic and face her fears. Anna is hesitant at first, but with much pressure, she obliges. She slowly heads to the attic, and to her relief, she discovers that the red substance is only paint. However, she also discovers that someone's been living in her attic for a while. It turns out to be Buell, the handyman. I knew he didn't have a real job. After a while, she again calls Douglas and explains everything to him. The latter explains that Buell was his first mental patient. He was in jail because he had brutally taken out his entire family. After numerous tests, he was declared insane, but Douglas helped rehabilitate him, and a few months later, he was eventually released. Douglas also motivated him to work, and that's how he became a handyman. Hearing all this, Anna suspects that the psychopath in Buell has returned, and now he is killing people one by one. Lo and behold, she notices Buell walking to Neil's house with a hammer amidst heavy rain. Scared that the murderer may kill Neil and Emma, she runs outside, despite her phobia of rain. However, halfway through her journey, Anna's fear takes over and she collapses on the ground. But as she is about to give up, she finds herself mentally teleported to the prison cell moments before her daughter Elizabeth was murdered by Massacre Mike. She also recalls how no one came to her little girl's rescue. After all the memories, Anna becomes motivated and refuses to let another little girl get murdered by a deranged serial killer. Hence, she slowly drags herself towards Emma's home and makes it inside. However, what she witnesses there shocks her to the core. Anna finds a mortally wounded Buell lying near the entrance. She quickly rushes up to him and the dying Buell tells her that he was only trying to return a parcel that had accidentally been delivered to Anna. Soon, he passes away and Anna feels terrible for even thinking that Buell was the
the culprit when he has put in so much effort to change. Anna is a professional at getting gaslighted. Just then, she hears Neil and Emma from the living room. Thinking Neil is the serial killer, Anna rushes to save the little girl. However, to her shock, she finds Neil lying dead on the couch. With this, Anna finally realizes that it was neither Neil nor Buell behind Elisa's murder. The criminal is revealed to be Emma, who appears behind with a bloody knife in her hand and an evil grin on her face. Emma comments that people always underestimate children and what they are capable of. A stunned Lisa asks Emma why she killed Lisa, and, like a typical villain, the little girl goes on to admit her crimes. A flashback then reveals that before Lisa was set to leave for the airport, Emma had requested that she buy some chocolate bars from her. However, a fitness enthusiast, Lisa, declines to do so and lectures the little girl about health, telling her that chocolate is the worst thing she could put in her body. This infuriated Emma, so she walked up to Lisa with a knife and told her that chocolate is not the worst thing one can put in their body before putting the knife through Lisa's neck. That's actually pretty clever. Anna is puzzled as Neil was also present at home during Lisa's murder, but he didn't hear anything. Emma explains that Neil was upstairs in the bathroom with the water running because he was practicing his ventriloquist act and didn't want anyone to hear him. She also reveals that she killed her father because Neil made her watch his terrible ventriloquist act. Horrified by her brutality, Anna calls her a monster, but Emma quickly retorts that it was her mother who was the monster. The vile woman got pregnant, which was totally against Emma's wishes, and she wanted the attention all to herself. And to finish off her mother and her baby sibling, Emma spent all summer cutting down the wooden platform of the dock. On the last day of her vacation, she lured her mother towards the fragile platform. As per the plan, the poor woman fell into the water, but the devious Emma just let her drown like a psychopath. Now, Emma plans to kill Anna and pin all the murders on her. She intends to play the victim and claim that she killed Anna in self-defense. Emma says that Anna is the perfect scapegoat because she can easily be branded as the mentally ill alcoholic woman from across the street. It's also revealed that Emma stole Anna's palette knife when she went to her home to sell her Girl Scout cookies. Anna is stunned by the little girl's elaborate planning and calls her crazy. However, this only enrages Emma, who reveals that her teacher also used to call her crazy until she pushed her off the lighthouse to her death. Saying this, she attacks Anna with a knife and even manages to stab her in the stomach. Fortunately, Anna manages to fight back and a long struggle follows. The house is wrecked in the process. Anna looks for Neil's gun, but Emma finds it first and shoots her in the shoulder. Furious, Anna calls her a bitch. <laughs> and lunges at her, successfully swatting the gun off of her hand. However, the psychopath girl manages to again dominate Anna and smashes a plate on her head, seemingly taking her out. Meanwhile, Douglas leaves for Anna's house, fearing for her well-being, as he's not been able to reach her after she found Buell living in her attic. Elsewhere, Emma calls 911 and tells the operator that she killed her crazy neighbor in self-defense, and the latter killed her father. But just then, Anna again starts moving, proving that she is still alive. Enraged, Emma quickly hangs up the call and carries the knife to finish off Anna once and for all. She sits on top of her victim as she is about to deliver the final blow, but Anna picks up a broken piece of plate and stabs Emma in the heart, finally killing her. Douglas arrives just in time and sees Anna stab the little girl in self-defense. He then rushes to Anna's side and asks her to stay with him, assuring her that everything is going to be fine. It's totally not going to be fine. She looks insane. A few weeks after the incident, Anna is declared innocent because of Douglas's testimony in favor of her and the plethora of evidence against Emma. Fast forward one year and we're reunited with Anna as she boards a plane to New York and our character happily orders a glass of vodka. Sitting next to her in seat 2A is a mysterious woman who informs Anna that she's headed to New York for unspecified business. However, after Anna awakes from a brief nap, she discovers the stranger dead in the airplane bathroom. She immediately alerts the staff about it, but to her horror, they mention that no passenger was assigned to seat 2A. Furthermore, they also reveal that no corpse or any sign of the crime was found in the bathroom. The story ends as we are left to wonder, is this another one of her hallucinations? Or did she just witness another real murder? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.